Hey, look, if Steve Young is number five on the list of top five 49ers of all time, Elliot Harrison, then I guess it's only going up from here. Yeah, that, that's right. Either that or you're already calling me out for having a bad list. But. I'm just saying there's a lot of great 49ers to choose from. <laughs> no, no, that's true. That's true. And there's no shame in being number five all time for this great franchise, which has been around since 1946 when they were in the All-America Football Conference. Steve Young, first full year as a starter was 1992. He went out and won the league MVP. He did that again in 94, won the Super Bowl in 94. And as a backup, authored the greatest run by a quarterback maybe in league history. This run right here in 1988 against the Vikings. I watched it at my aunt and uncle's. I was rooting for the Vikings, and I was very, very mad. What year was it? 1988. Regular jams. Uh, listening to your Walkman? <laughs> I was probably listening to a Walkman. Yeah. All right, number four. Help me on this. Leo Nomalini. Leo Nomalini. Right? That's right. You got it right. Uh, one of the greatest 49ers of all time. Obviously, he's on this list, but you really have to identify all eras. I can't tell uh, who's the 49er, which, which team's which here, which the colors and this black and white, man. Hey, I man. I, I think the simpler the better on these uniforms, but Nomalini made the Pro Bowl so many times, 10 times. He was the greatest 49ers player for a long time. Their running backs were very good. Joe Perry and Hugh McElhaney, both Hall of Famers. But this guy was a first ballot Hall of Famer in 1969. Played 14 years for the team. NFL Now, we called him the number the number one, number eight pick of all time. That's Ronnie Lott. And you look at how good he was all over the field. It's easy to see why he was ranked. Right. Yeah, I like that. Well, if you got Ronnie Lott at eighth overall, that's a steal. Because this yeah. guy was a first ballot Hall of Famer. The great thing about Ronnie Lott's career, other than the fact that he's the most fierce hitting defensive back of all time, is that he made the Pro Bowl as a corner his first four years, Mark. And then in 1985, the team asked him to switch to safety mid-year. And from 86 to 90, he made the Pro Bowl as a safety yep. or all pro. Then he made it again when he went to the Raiders in 91. And this guy's a member of the NFL's all-time team. Yeah, a four-time Super Bowl champion. It's hard to say enough good things about Ronnie Lott. Yep. Easy to see why he is uh, so high on the NFL Now list of best draft picks ever. He's only number three here because yes. you got a couple of guys ahead of him that uh, if you're a 49ers fan, it's easy to guess who those two guys are. It's the order that right. maybe people will debate. Well, I went with Jerry Rice. And look, everybody knows Jerry Rice is in the argument for the greatest players of all time. So how could he be number two? Because he's what on your on your all-time list of players? I'd, I'd probably put him two. I, I have Jim Brown still. I, I guess I'm an old school guy as the number one. So if he's higher than Montana on that list, how would he be lower on this one? Well, I'm going to get to that with Montana. Let Let's me uh, let me brag about Jerry Rice do for it, just man. a moment. Uh, Jerry Rice, a little bit of a slow start in 1985, his rookie year, had some drops, and then he turned it on late in the year at a 200-yard game. And by 1986, he was the best receiver in pro football. And that really didn't change for pretty much the next 15 years. The guy was absolutely dominant for the 49ers. And, of course, uh, Super Bowl 23 MVP won three Super Bowls while a member of the Niners. Yeah, what an unbelievable player uh, to, to watch. And this guy, it takes someone special to be on top of Jerry Rice. Yes. You're going with Montana. A couple of reasons why. Number one, he was Rice's distributor. So that has something to do with it. So Jerry Rice was very fortunate to come into league with the best quarterback in the league throwing him the ball. But the main thing is that when Joe Montana was the third round draft choice of this organization in 1979, they were nowhere's Bill, man. They were a terrible team. Now, Bill Walsh had a lot to do with them turning around. But Mark, by the middle of his second year, he won the starting job. By his third year, he was Super Bowl MVP and authoring uh, maybe the single most defining moment in pro football history, the catch. Easily for this franchise. Oh, yeah, and, and arguably the league as a whole. Uh, yeah. Joe Montana, four-time Super Bowl winner, 11 touchdowns, no picks in four Super Bowls. Yeah, just unbelievable. And when you have that discussion about who's the greatest quarterback of all time between him and Tom Brady, it's kind of hard to compare apples and oranges because Brady would admit that he stands on the shoulders of a guy like right. Joe Montana. And the fact that he has an unblemished record in Super Bowls uh, certainly is, uh, uh, you know, an argument in his corner. But either way, what a franchise to look at. Although Joe the Jet Perry could have gotten a mention, right. Roger Craig, even Dwight Clark, simply because of that catch and what it meant to the team. Uh, a lot of guys you could have included here, though. Elliot Harrison's top five Niners Maybe. of all time. Roger Craig, John Brody. Keep going.